However, it is also good for the international media to represent facts when it comes to what is happening in the country. The BBC, in its article about Kenya, is asserting that Kenya is one of the most highly taxed countries. Nothing can be further than the truth. Our country taxation is at most 36% compared to countries in the West, including the UK itself, that at times are taxing people over 50% of their income. So that, I think, is a misrepresentation of facts. Number two, the cost of living. You, you saw the World Bank yesterday release some report of the, of the countries that have the highest inflation in the world, led by Egypt and other countries in Africa, including Rwanda and other, other, other jurisdictions. Kenya is not one of them. In fact, our inflation has reduced from 9%, over 9%, to the current 6.8%. Just last month alone, it has reduced from 69 to 6.8%. And that tells you our country has got very good fiscal or monetary policy. So, so that, that is very, very, very critical. Number three, BBC is trying to assert that uh, when we pay our own taxes, we are actually um, uh, trying to close down on Kenyan businesses. That's not the truth. We as Kenyans know that when we pay taxes, it is actually for us to be self-reliant. And there are 1,400 Kenyans, young people, who have been given the work of ensuring that they provide for revenue service. They graduated from Eldoret, and they are Kenyans who have been given jobs. And, and that's the work that they are doing. Their work is to assist businesses to actually comply with what is provided for in law. There is also an assertion that uh, 70,000 jobs have been lost because of FKE. Nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, this Kenya Kwanzaa administration, under the leadership of President William Ruto, has been able to create 120,000 jobs through affordable housing. 56,000 teachers have been employed. And also, if you look further, you will find that sectors of the economy that are generating jobs. So those that were in the private sector are the ones who are actually joining the mainstream of, 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 of sector, for example, teachers, and also in other construction you know, companies, uh, you know, the, uh, the fundies and water view. And also 100,000 community health promoters have actually been onboarded, uh, getting a, a stipend every month. So actually, this government is providing uh, opportunities uh, for, for, for people. So it's actually creating more jobs. And, and also to say that... Uh, President William Ruto has not hidden the fact that these are painful decisions to be made, and Kenyans are aware, because we are moving from the edge of the economic precipice. And so, ladies and gentlemen, these are things that were expected. If at all, we have to recalibrate our economy so as to actually spring forward, going to be one of the best economies in the world. In fact, we are rated as the 29th fastest growing economy in the world. There have been assertions that all tourists and businesses are leaving Kenya. Nothing can be further from the truth. While it, is, while it is actually a fact that foreign direct investment has reduced over the past few years, but now the, the kind of um, a measure that this government is doing to ensure that we attract investors, many are flocking to want to invest in this country. And, and you, that's why you can see our president moving from one country to another, because people are expressing interest uh, you know, in terms of even production of some of the key uh, you know, items that are needed by the market uh, you know, in, in this country, including vehicles and so many other forms of manufacturing uh, that, that we, are, we are trying to leverage on, including the nine value chains uh, you know, that we are looking at as form of a springboard for, for industrialization. Actually, uh, if you look at it uh, keenly, you realize that um, because of the free visa entry, which other countries are even copying, like Rwanda, uh, we are anticipating uh, our, our tourists to increase from the current 1.48 million to 2 million in the short term, and by 2026-2027, there will be 4.5 million. 
and by that time our tourism shall have doubled up. So we are inviting people to come and they are more than willing to do so. That is why we are doing so. So I think for BBC, President Ruto is one uh, you know, president and leader who is the most popular uh, currently across the country. And uh, the, the, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, even according to recent ratings, independent ratings, has been rated to be the most popular coalition, political coalition in this country. And we are, this can only get better because when you are at the bottom, you can only rise up. So in the next few years, two or three years, you will see transformation. And President Ruto has spoken very clearly that in 10 years' time, Kenya will be, uh, no, you, can, you will not be able to recognize Kenya. And part of it is also the, uh, the, the, the dividends for devolution. So really, we are calling upon the government of Kenya is calling upon the BBC to get the facts right. There is freedom of the press, but let, let them report factually, and they should be able to retract uh, that uh, you know, you know, you know, article and apologize for wrongly misleading the world about the fact. And we we'll we'll issue an official uh, you know, statement in written uh, in that regard because we must defend uh, what is actually factual. So with those remarks, let me uh, now read um, this statement. Highlights of the flooding situation in Wajia County. As we speak, an estimated 11,600 households, that is 69,600 people, have been affected, uh, out of which 6,010 households were displaced. Uh, there are reports of about seven people who have died here in Wajia uh, due to drowning and stagnant water, mainly water pans. Uh, the, the massive flooding uh, that has been witnessed here ended up resulting in widespread impact uh, in nearly all the sectors of the economy. And uh, there are extensive damages to houses uh, and critical infrastructure, especially roads and bridges, and also shops, farms, markets, schools and boreholes, water pans, and sanitation, uh, sanitize, uh, sanitation facilities. Uh, the numbers are as follows. There are 75 boreholes that have been affected and 54 water pans across the county. And this has affected uh, communities' access to clean and safe drinking water uh, in, in, in the meantime. Uh, further, 42 health facilities and 212 outreach sites uh, uh, were cut off and were inaccessible. Now they may, be, uh, uh, they may not be cut off, but the roads are really uh, damaged. And this has really negatively affected a uh, provision of critical health and nutrition services to over 200 communities uh, that are spread across uh, this county. And it is important to note that uh, this county is so huge, it is actually the size of 26 counties combined. It is really, really huge, uh, bordering both um, uh, Ethiopia and, and, and Somalia. Uh, and so it's, 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 a, it's a very uh, critical aspect. Um, uh, 13 sub-counties, six constituencies, quite versed. A total of 80 schools have also been uh, damaged, and so access to schools remains a big challenge. Uh, and of course, we will work with the local administration and the county government to ensure that uh, normal school uh, resumes uh, comes in uh, come January. 1,705 acres of farmland has been destroyed across the county. And most of these affected sites are inaccessible by road since the roads uh, serving them have been severely affected by the floods. This has resulted in acute shortage of essential goods and services. And the situation might deteriorate if it continues to rain in the next one week. But we hope that uh, now uh, we will not, because most of the rain has moved to uh, Kilifi, as I may have briefed you yesterday, and Western Kenya, that this place is actually safe. Despite these challenges, the government interventions continues across this county, provision of food supplies, medicine and food items continue throughout the county, by road and also through airlifts. The WFP helicopter, which was in Garissa yesterday, is now in Wajia 
and has offloaded 2.5 tons of food this morning. We are glad to report that no Kenya has actually died out of hunger, which is very, very commendable uh, because we've just come from drought and now flooding, but nobody has died out of hunger. And we must really commend uh, the national government in collaboration uh, with the county government because of this uh, you know, reality and outcome. The government is very keen in post-flooding interventions to ensure urgent return of normalcy and weather forecasts indicate that Wajia will remain dry except for little showers this weekend. So this is the position of uh, uh, the national emergency response. But also this morning, uh, Madam Masi uh, led a delegation uh, together with P.S. Idris Dokota and myself uh, in accompanying her. Uh, we have uh, some materials that we came with. Uh, we, you know, the, the, the plane that we came with, we came with a lot of uh, materials, I think about two tons or thereabout, uh, which then, of course, will be distributed. Uh, but also, here, we have uh, vehicles, and I'm going to read what they have, uh, and then um, uh, after the dignitaries are able to address, then we'll go and launch them. So, uh, in those vehicles there, GKB 541G, we have 200 pieces of blankets, we have rice, 200 bags, we have kitchen sets, 50 bells, and there is a lot more at the Kenya Red Cross. Yesterday we were the ambassador there, and they gave us 150 million shillings worth of support. Uh, we also have sanitary pads for gas, three bells. We have uh, 50 boxes of soap. We have uh, 200 pieces of... That has been government spokesperson Dr. Isaac Moura live from Wajia where he is leading a food distribution and also a flood, a flood mitigation assessment. And uh, very quickly just to highlight some of the things that he has pointed out, 75 boreholes have been affected in Wajia County, 42 health facilities have been cut off, 80 schools damaged. 1,700 hectares of farm land have been destroyed around the country. Government continue to distribute food aid and also no Kenyan has died as a result of lack of food or hunger as the country is just out of the worst drought in decades.